Good Day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, the Union of Culture Armenia on the theme Armenians, people of the past or of the future, was admired by the audience. Sons of Western Armenia, Artur Makarchian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, the Central Council of Armenians in Germany expresses its support for the statement by the National Assembly of the Republic of Artsakh. Baku continues its policy of ecocide provoking Artsakh Armenians to leave Artsakh. The representatives of the International Committee of the Red Cross are not allowed to visit the prisoners in Baku. Let's support Western Armenian State Television. On Friday, May 26, the Union of Armenia Cultural Union spoke to an audience of several dozen people at the Jean Moulin Hall in Burjle Valans drum about Armenians, people of the past or the future. Wilfried Pyle and George Ishasian were present as representatives of Burjle Valans. There were also present Armena Abrahamian, President of Western Armenia, Lydia Markosia, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Western Armenia, Aran Nurian, one of the heads of the FRA, Valencia branch, Christopher Mikhail. George Yeretsian, Alain Yeksuzian, and Sarkis Jamakordzian, members of the Armenian Association's Vice President of Armenia, and Ijeval Khosrov Ilyozer, who was in Malatya and Western Armenia. Grigor Amirzanian emphasized Armenians are people with history. In ancient times, Armenians were a large nation and constituted approximately 5 million people in the world, which at the moment of initiation of Christianity amounted to approximately 200 million people. Armenia, which was subjected to the invasions of the Roman Persians, Arabs, Mongols, and Seljuk Turks shrunk over the centuries. The history of Armenians, which has an 8,000 year history, testifies to the firmness of the people, which has always been subjected to attacks, but it has remained an unshakable and strong nation. Armenak Abrahamian, Lydia Markosian, Sarkija Magorzian, George Ishasian, Aran Nurian, Simon Melkonian, and Alain Yuxuzian made speeches on Armenians, people of the past or future. The participants spoke about the resilience of the Armenian people with the rich past and future. There were dark clouds over Armenia and Artsakh, especially after the 44-day war in 2020, but even that didn't break the nation. At the end of the evening, Western Armenia identity cards were handed out to several of those present at the meeting. Grigor Amirzanian, read the full article on our website. Artur Makarchian was born in 1959 in the Hadrut region. In 1976, he graduated from secondary school in his native village and in the same year he was admitted to the Faculty of History at Yerevan State University. Here, Artur Makarchian chose ethnography, a narrow professional field that at that time had no political demand. The famous ethnographer Yuri Makartumian played a certain role in his choice. From the choice of his profession to the beginning of his work at the Hadrut Historical Museum, Artur Makarchian collected rich demographic ethnographic material in a number of settlements of Soviet Armenia and former Artsakh, both on his own initiative and within the framework of targeted scientific expeditions organized by well-known experts. In 1977, as a second-year student, Artur Makarchian traveled with his friend, archaeologist Hamlet Bogosian, to the village of Hachen in the Hadrut region, collecting historical material from 18 villages of Artsakh. It was his first trip to the homeland for scientific purposes. After that, the material culture of Artsakh was always in the the center of his attention. The Karabakh movement, which began in 1988, fully involved Artur Makarchan and he was at the center of the events in the Hadrut region not only as a leader, organizer and commander, but also as a direct soldier. It should be noted that Artur Makarchan was a member of the second delegation from Artsakh to Moscow in January 1988. From the very beginning of the Artsakh movement, Artur Makarchan was an active participant in the movement, being among the nine people who wrote the first letter to Gorbachev. Artur Makarchan's pass from the Hatrud rally of February 12, 1988 was very fast. During Artur Makarchian's tenure, the Malibalu and Kirkajan regions surrounding Stepanakert, the Khojalu district and a number of villages of Hadrut were liberated. Although he was an active participant in the development of the military operation plan, he did not see the liberation of Shushi. The period of realization of Artur Makarchian's scientific preferences coincided with the rapid rise of the Karabakh liberation struggle and the young man who grew up in a noble traditional family received a solid army education and was nourished by national idea threw himself into the maelstrom of the liberation struggle Artur Mukherjee used to say I was born on this land I owe everything I have to this land now it is time for reparations the full article is available on our website 
Under Taliyat's order to make every effort to destroy the name Armenia and Western Armenia, the oppressors destroyed, erased and reduced to ashes almost all the churches and monasteries in Armenian populated areas of Western Armenia and the Ottoman Empire. As the historian and philologist Georg Mesrop, the patriarch of Western Armenia, wrote, even we Armenians did not know the real number of our monasteries and churches, their type and quantity, their quality and value. But fortunately, list and statistical data of Armenian monasteries and churches complied on various occasions in the years preceding the First World War and the genocide perpetrated by the Turks against the Armenians give an idea of their approximate number. According to testimony, 1727 Armenian apostolic monasteries and churches were completely destroyed and looted. According to other data, more than 2,000 Armenian monasteries, churches and chapels were destroyed and looted in Western Armenia and throughout Ottoman Turkey during those years. The victims of the genocide committed against the Armenians were the medieval manuscripts decorated with miniatures that belonged to these monasteries and churches, which were also to personal property of many Armenians of Western Armenia, preserved in their families as sacred objects and passed down from generation to generation, for which knowledgeable people were ready to give their property. The Central Council of Armenians of Germany expresses its support to the statement of the National Assembly of the Republic of Artsakh, considering that the Republic of Artsakh can be recognized as a part of Azerbaijan by any structure, especially by the authorities of the Republic of Armenia. Artsakh statue has already been determined in 1991. The December 10 popular will, derived from the UN resolution on self-determination of peoples and nations, no authority has the right to challenge it. In fact, Nikol Pashinyan, with his commitment, also violates the provisions of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the Republic of Armenia on Artsakh, because according to the decision of the Supreme Council of Armenia on July 8, 1992, to consider unacceptable for the Republic of Armenia an international interstate document in which the Republic of Artsakh will be referred to as a part of Azerbaijan. We urge Armenians to unite around the right of Artsakh to self-determination and protection of the sovereign territories of the Republic of Armenia, not allowing the current authorities of the Republic of Armenia to cede Artsakh and its sovereign territories to Azerbaijan. Only through unity of all Armenians and victorious exit from this difficult situation is possible. Otherwise, disastrous consequences for the Armenian statehood will be inevitable. The management of the Central Council of Germany. During the Artsakh War, Baku, using weapons containing phosphorus, mercilessly burning down the forest and after the war continuing a policy of ecocide so that the Armenians of Artsakh were forced to leave Artsakh. During the war, Artsakh MFA stated that the use of phosphorus weapons is a flagrant violation of the international humanitarian law, norms and principles of the Geneva Conventions, as well as provisions stipulated in the relevant UN conventions and documents. Various human rights organizations on the basis of facts stress that the Baku has used a pro prohibited weapons in Artsakh. Baku's crimes have not received the corresponding international response and no concrete measures have been taken. Today, the only large reservoir of Artsakh and its environment is facing serious environmental problems. This circumstance has also affected agriculture and water resources. The level of water in the reservoir is reduced, approaching a critical point. Azerbaijan, through such criminal actions, is trying to cause an environmental catastrophe and blame Artsakh for it. It's not incidental that Azerbaijan periodically spreads information that Azerbaijan may change the course of Tartar River, as a result of which Sarsang Reservoir will be deprived of water. The government of Western Armenia reminds us that the use of banned chemical weapons by Baku authorities is a common occurrence. Since the four-day war in 2016, people have died as a result of lethal burns caused by the use of banned phosphorus weapons. This fact was condemned by international instances, but Baku authorities, ignoring all international norms, continue their genocidal policy, exposing not only the peaceful population of Artsakh to genocide, but also the nature. The government of Western Armenia strictly condemns this policy of the Baku authorities demanding from the international instances to prohibit the use of inadmissible weapons, which may become a precedent for other states in the future. It was become known that on May 26, from 7 o'clock, communication with two servicemen of the Armenian Armed Forces supplying food to the combat positions was interrupted. The Azerbaijani side confirmed that our servicemen were captured, but the ICRC representatives are not yet allowed to visit them. At the moment, we do not have any information. We are also monitoring the situation. The issue is at the center of our attention. This was reported to past info by Zara Amatuni, head of communication and prevention programs of ICRC in Armenia, referring 
referring to the loss of communication with two Armenian servicemen of the Armenian Armed Forces, noting if there is a statement or any confirmation about the search from the family and the authorities of the servicemen, in this case through dialogue we pass the issue to the other party. We can't say anything about the details yet, we are still following events at this time. Dear compatriots, Western Armenia State Television is not engaged in self-promotion. The leadership of Western Armenia, remaining faithful to its idea and principles, continues to present various events related to the history, present and future of our country through television and other media platforms in a new way, to inform the government about political and social events and to give an opportunity to communicate with each other. With the help of our television, you can establish direct connection with the government and the members of the National Assembly to raise all your concerns concerns which are directly connected with Western Armenia and its citizen and also to make various interesting proposals. Besides being a TV viewer, you also have an opportunity to become a citizen of Western Armenia by following the appropriate procedure. Let us remind you that Western Armenia TV is not in the business of self-promotion, but rather seeks to expand its ties with your help. Your support is our common victory. Together we are the power. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Havar zulu, mata zulu, kesi te sa varazulu. Pazvir, 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 pazvir in vart zulu. Bats vir, 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 bats vir